Alright, so today we're going to talk about conservation of energy in the Lagrangian formalism. Now, it's going to be a little bit counterintuitive because energy in the Lagrangian formalism is going to be a little bit different than in the Newtonian formalism, which we'll see right now. So, one useful thing about the Lagrangian is that we're going to be able to figure out if energy is conserved just by looking at the form of the Lagrangian. Now, like I said before, this energy is going to be a little bit different than in the Newtonian sense of the word, but it's still going to be a useful property nonetheless. So to figure out exactly when this energy is conserved, we're going to have to look at the time derivative of the Lagrangian. And just to remind you, the Lagrangian is going to be a function of q, q dot, and t. So our generalized coordinates, its time derivative, and possibly time. So since this is a function of three variables, whenever we take the total time derivative, we're going to have to take the derivative with respect to each one. So whenever we do partial L over partial Q, we then have to do dq over dt, which is just q dot. And then here we have to add partial L over partial Q dot. And then we have to take the time derivative of Q dot, which just gives us Q double dot, plus partial L over partial T. So what we're going to do here is this term right here by the product rule. And it's going to be a little counterintuitive, but it'll make sense once we unpack it a little bit. So I claim that we can simplify it by replacing this with this. Now, <clears throat> this term will make sense because whenever we expand this out by product rule, we'll have to take the time derivative of q dot, so q double dot, times partial L over partial q dot, so that part makes sense. But then what about the first part, whenever we have to do d over dt of partial L over partial q dot? Well, if we remind ourselves of the Euler-Lagrange equation, which is partial d over dt of partial L over partial q dot is going to be equal to partial L over partial Q, then whenever we take the time derivative of partial L over partial Q dot, we get exactly partial L over partial Q, which we see right here. And then we keep the Q dot the same. So we can see that this simplification actually does work. But what does it gain us? Well, if we use the linearity of the derivative, so we've got a d over dt here and a d over dt here. Well, we can just move that over here. Since we can add and subtract derivatives that they're with respect to the same variable. So we have d over dt of partial L over partial q dot times q dot minus L plus this term right here. Now, we can almost integrate this. If we had the condition, if it happened to be the case that partial L over partial T was zero, so in other words, if the Lagrangian was not explicitly dependent on time, it would just be this is equal to zero. We could then integrate that, and that would mean partial L over partial Q dot times Q dot minus L, is going to be equal to some constant which we'll call h. And this h we're going to call the Hamiltonian and it is going to be what we call the energy of the system. Now this does not look <laughs> like the energy of the system in Newtonian mechanics and many times it will not be. We'll see shortly in what cases where it does match the Newtonian formalism. It will have units of energy. However, 
it will not always match the how we think about energy and Newtonian mechanics. So we think about the energy of the system as like one half m, let's say x dot squared, just because I need a concrete variable, plus the potential. And that's not always going to be the case. Um, so in the Lagrangian formalism, if the Lagrangian is not explicitly dependent on time, something is conserved. It may not be the energy in the Newtonian sense of the word, but this quantity right here is going to be conserved. And that's still going to be a useful quantity. It Just because it doesn't match the Newtonian definition of the word energy, that doesn't mean it's not useful. It is still a constant of the motion. So I mentioned that there will be some cases, however, where the Hamiltonian is going to directly match what the Newtonian sense of the word energy means. So in other words, T plus V. And to show this, we're going to have to look at kinetic energy in a slightly different way. So kinetic energy in general is some function, possibly of time, which we'll call M. This is, it could be the mass, but it's not always going to be. Um, so possibly some function of time. And it's going to be dependent on the square of the time derivative of the generalized coordinate. So, in other words, it, it is going to be a homogeneous quadratic function of the velocity. So, if it's going to be homogeneous, this part right here is not going to be dependent on q dot. This m function can only be a function of time and possibly the generalized coordinate itself, but not its time derivative. And to show when this is going to match the Newtonian sense of the word, we're going to have to assume that the only part of the Lagrangian that is dependent on the velocity is the kinetic energy. So in other words, L can be put in this form. It'll be the kinetic, which is going to be a function of Q dot, minus the potential which is just dependent on Q, which is going to be the case for a large variety of systems. So if we plug this definition of kinetic energy into our definition of the Hamiltonian that we got earlier, well, if L is T minus V, and only T is dependent on Q dot, well, then we're just going to have this first part right here is partial t over partial q dot times q dot minus the Lagrangian. And if we p take partial t over partial q dot, well, if we look up here, we would get 2m q dot. Since m is not a function of q dot, then whenever we take the partial derivative with respect to q dot, we just get 2m q dot. But then if we multiply by q dot, we just get 2m q dot squared minus l. But if we look up here, that just means we have 2t minus the Lagrangian. But if the Lagrangian is minus t plus, well, if the Lagrangian, my bad, is t minus v, then whenever we subtract the Lagrangian, we'll get minus t plus v. So we can see that the Hamiltonian, in the case of a velocity-independent potential, would be t plus v. So that's whenever the conservation of energy theorem in Lagrangian mechanics directly matches the Newtonian formalism. So just to sum, sum up what we've done in this video, we'll see that if the Lagrangian, 
is not an explicit function of time, then we have that this quantity called the Hamiltonian is conserved, where the Hamiltonian takes this form right here. And moreover, if we have a velocity independent potential, then we have a relatively straightforward formula for the Hamiltonian. It'll just be directly the energy of the system. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you did. See you in the next video.